Hi, good morning. We're glad you're joining us here at Trinity United Methodist Church. Um, this is the Sunday before Pentecost Sunday, and I'm getting rather excited about Pentecost Sunday. I'm going to do something different I have never, ever, ever, ever done before. I'm planning on having a watch night here in the sanctuary starting at 7 p.m. And a watch night is where a community of believers come together and have praise and prayer um, waiting upon the Lord. And I want to invite you. I don't care if I'm the only person here, um, but I would welcome more than one person to be here with me. And um, we're just going to see where it goes. So if you would like to step out in faith, and um, you can come for a little bit of time, or you can come and stay and, and tarry with me. But we'll be reading the scriptures, um, we'll be reading the Psalms, and there might be some music that's already pre-recorded, um, but it will be a holy time. Um, so if you want to do that, give me a call here at the church office and let me know that you'll be here. And we are looking forward to coming together as a church family. More information will be coming out. But let us begin and turn our hearts to Christ in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this holy day. We thank you, Lord, that you are providing. We thank you, Lord, for the power and the grace and the word of Jesus Christ and the covenant that you have made with humanity. We pray, Lord, for peoples everywhere to turn their hearts to you to seek your face and to receive the salvation and life through Jesus Christ. We ask, Lord, that you would help us as we face our burdens, our trials, as the stresses mount up, as the resources are depleted. Jesus, we pray for your, your holy presence providing. We pray for faith to see us through we pray, Lord, for acts of kindness and generosity, a spirit of unity that glorifies you. Lord Jesus, preside over this gathering. Holy Spirit, lead us in spirit and truth and touch our hearts and bear fruit for the kingdom of God. We praise you, Jesus. We worship you. We bless your mighty name. Receive us, Jesus, as your children set aside for your holy work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the power and the glory. 
Father, exalt your glory. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to read from Acts, um, Acts 1. In my former book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. Now, this is Luke writing to the people. Luke wrote... um, the book of Acts. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and he spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, he was eating with them. He gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem But wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the dates the father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to all the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up to the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James and Simon, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm going to ask you this morning, how has knowing Jesus changed your life? How has knowing Jesus changed your life? How has he changed your thoughts, your beliefs, your actions? How has the Holy Spirit being present in your life changed your willingness, your demeanor on reaching other people for Christ? Because this outpouring of the Holy Spirit that the disciples were soon to receive was greater than what they had experienced thus far. And it was to equip them with knowledge and wisdom on high And to empower them to go out into the world to do the same things that Jesus had done. They they were called as disciples to share the good news of Jesus Christ. So that others would hear and believe. And, And not only were they to verbally share the good news of Jesus Christ through supernatural acts of of healing and deliverance people would see the glory of the Father and the outpouring of love and compassion and desire the mercy and the grace that they were proclaiming. So I want to ask you in your life, 
how are you bearing fruit for the kingdom? And you might have your lists of, oh, well, I do this and I do this and I do this and I do this, you know, and I'm going to say, yeah, okay. But how are you bearing fruit for the kingdom? You know, that eternal lasting fruit, the fruit that God is calling you to bear in your life that is permanent and not fleeting. The disciples were told by Jesus, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. Wait. Wait with expectancy. Don't leave. Don't, don't go off and do something else. But wait. And I know in this day and age, we are consumed with busyness. We all have busy lives, and that's our problem. We have pushed waiting on the Lord and desiring the presence of the Lord aside. And, and we no longer just come to Jesus and say, I just want to be in your presence, Jesus. I want to wait on you. I want to listen and discern and hear. I want to experience you in the fullness of your glory. Jesus, I desire for you to lead me in my daily living so that I bear fruit for your glory. Have you prayed that type of prayer? This week, I've, 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 I'm a reader. Oh, my gosh. I read about a book a week if it's a good week. I really do, and I, I love what I read. But the word of consecration, you know, I always thought consecration was what somebody does to you. And I've been redirected on my thinking that it's us who desire to be consecrated to the Lord. It is we who have to make that decision that we want to be consecrated to the Lord. And, and consecration is being set aside, a person or place being set aside for the holiness of the Lord to be present. And it requires us to have an intentional desire to be consecrated. You know, I've been aside, set aside to be a pastor, but also in my faith journey, I have, in prayer, laid down my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. All that I am, all that I have, my thoughts, my emotions, everything about me, I have given to the Lord as an offering for the Lord to use for the Lord's glory. And it's the Holy Spirit then who, who comes and takes that desire to be consecrated and set aside for the Lord. It's the Holy Spirit then that comes and equips you with holiness and righteousness. You see, so many of us as Christians are striving to be good. We're striving to do this or don't do that. We have the legalism mindset of the that you have to do this and you can't do this, and if you do this, you're not holy. And I want to say that Jesus' words in the Old Testament, they teach us how to live. They teach us how to live lives that honor God. But it's the Holy Spirit and the work of the cross that makes us holy. And if you're trying to be holy apart from dedicating your life to Christ, apart from recognizing, woe, me, woe am I, a sinner. I need your grace and your mercy, Jesus. Forgive me. If you're trying to be holy without the work of the Holy Spirit in your lives, you will always be a frustrated believer. Because it takes the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to sanctify you, to purify your being, to equip you for the ministries of the church, the work of Christ. Well, our churches throughout the world, definitely in the United States, were suffering because as disciples, we haven't entered into that waiting on the Lord. We haven't entered into that desiring the holiness of Christ to consume us. You know, we're saying, okay, Jesus, we want you, but I still want to be in charge of my life, right? 
You know, you have those pockets, you have those strongholds in your life that you don't even want to admit to Jesus because you know they grieve Jesus. But yet, when you take him to Christ in prayer, his love is swift and his mercy reigns and the guilt and the shame is removed. Now, when the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes, there's an outpouring of of love and joy. Love and joy. And that rules our being. You know, we, we, we are excited to know God. We are excited to worship. We're excited to surrender. We're excited to be used. We're excited to see what God's up to. And how does God want to reveal uh, his essence a little bit greater than what it was the day before? I want to ask you, do you have that longing? Do you long for more because there is more? I don't want you to be content. I'm wanting you to cry out, Jesus, I want more of you. Holy Spirit, come. You know, that is an honorable prayer to pray. There's no shame in saying, Jesus, I want more of you. That's saying, Jesus, I want to be unified with you. I want your Holy Spirit to reign in me to where I am living and loving in unity with God the Father, that I am drawn up in the glory of God on a daily basis. Are you living that type of life right now? Because that's in that prayer that Randy just sang. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. (coughs) That's the glory and the righteousness of God reigning in the here and now. And God is waiting for his children to wait on him with expectant desire. Jesus, come in the fullness of your glory. And then be at peace because we are not a perfect people. Where there is sin in your life, confess it. But then trust and walk in the newness of life that God has to offer. Incline your ear to hear. And you will hear the sweet whispers and guidance and direction of the Lord in your daily decisions, but also in your outreach ministry on on how Jesus is calling you to be a witness into a hurting world. Because Christians, that's your calling. You are calling to be that radical disciple so in love with Jesus that you will go and do what Jesus is calling you to do. You will no longer trust on your own earthly wisdom or understanding, but you're like, okay, Jesus, I don't get this. I don't understand how this will work, but I give it to you. And I trust that you will provide. And you know what? God does, and he does it in exceedingly abundant ways. Man, I'm up here just filled with stories of witness and testimony of how God has provided in my life over and over and over again. But I'm also a Christian who's waiting for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I'm here as your pastor and as a disciple of Jesus Christ, pleading for Jesus not to pass Huntington, Indiana by or Trinity United Methodist Church by. I pray for a Pentecostal revival for each one of us, that the newness that Christ offers you, the life that Christ offers you, that you would be willing to let Christ have his will and prevail, that you would know the newness and outpouring of love that God has for you. A new day is coming. I listen to prophets throughout the world and they're all saying there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And will you be ready? Will you be expecting? Or when when Christ shows up in a Pentecostal way, will you deny that that is truth, that that is real, that that is relevant? And will you go unchanged? These disciples of long ago are teaching us. First, they say, they were all together. 
Now, I know we're doing social distancing and we're not together, but they were constantly in prayer. They were continually in prayer. They were praising. They were worshiping. They lifted up prayers of supplication. They prayers of intercession. They were of one heart and mind. And our churches, when our churches have disagreements and squabbles and we divide, we haven't done our homework, have we? We're not in unity of spirit. We haven't hit the pause button to say, Lord, what is it that you desire of us here? We, we long to see you glorified. We long to see what you are doing. We hunger and thirst for more of you. Well, I hope this week, wherever you are in your faith journey, maybe you've never asked Jesus into your life. The beginning is to recognize you need the love and mercy of a holy God who desires to bless you and redeem you. And once you receive that salvation, rejoice. Rejoice. Seek the Lord through prayer and through scripture. Find yourself a seasoned Christian and join in discussion with them. And for the rest of you that are longtime Christians, I pray that you're praying as I am for a fresh outpouring and anointing of the Holy Spirit so that we can be equipped by the power and the presence of Yahweh to accomplish his will rather than ours. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that there is more we thank you that in spite of who we are and what we've done, you have desires for us to know you intimately and to trust you. And we thank you, Jesus, that you have sent the Comforter who provides wisdom and discernment and the gifts of the Spirit that we may be effective witnesses out into a hurting world. Holy Spirit, fall fresh upon us. Help us first to experience the outpouring of love and joy that you bring. And set us free from every lie that we have embraced and aligned ourselves with. We denounce them in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for an outflowing of your spirit to fill us with everlasting love. That our faith would be grounded in you. And that we would learn to yield to the Holy Spirit again and again and again. For the glory of Jesus Christ. For the redemption of the world. We love you, Father, for loving us. We bless your holy name, Jesus, for the sacrifice that you have made. And we receive you. We desire you. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Reign. As Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Redeem us. Sanctify us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
a good day. God bless.